Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to welcome everybody back to the program, and we thank God, children, for this privilege of being with you again. And I'm going to be continuing in my message concerning now the holy people of God and truly what it takes to be a holy person because we're definitely in an hour of great temptations and great trials and we're going to have to have more than just putting our name on some church book or maybe going out here in the water alone. We're going to have to have the good spirit of God and that's what I'm going to be teaching on today because we need to recognize there is no difference in the spirit of God the Comforter, or your salvation, or the Holy Ghost. I'm going to be showing you that to really have God at all, you have to be born of the Spirit of God. And that is the Holy Ghost. Now, as far as God manifesting in your flesh through the gifts and signs or miracles or however God wants to do that, it still has to be operated and manifested by God's Spirit. Now, this is what we're going to be teaching on, and we do love the Lord. and going to ask you to be sure to have your Bible ready as we go into Romans chapter 8. But also, we'd like to invite you now, if you can, to tune in with us on our website, www.pastorpeterow.com. And we have some good articles. We also have our radio schedules. And, and if we're going to be out in meetings, we'll try to remember to put them up, our church times and so forth. So stay with us in these programs. And, and also we have our home church. And our church services is, is on Wednesdays and uh, Saturday nights and Sundays. And on Wednesday and Saturday, it's at 7 o'clock in the evening. And on Sundays, it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And we do thank God for all of His people. And invite you to come out and be with us because we're just trying to stand for the foundation of God. And today I'm going to begin out the book of Romans about the 8th chapter. And children, I want to speak to us concerning if you as a Christian can be a Christian without the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of people are teaching that you go get saved and then you come back later to get the Holy Ghost. But we're going to show you a little more into this. And, and there's no doubt now the gifts of the Spirit are right. Speaking with tongues, prophesying, and all of these gifts are a part of the Spirit. And we need to understand these things. But if you will, tune with me in the book of Romans here, the 8th chapter, verse 1. Paul said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So you see, we're made free tonight to serve God by His Spirit. And that's why the Bible said, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You have to have the Spirit to be free indeed. Now, go to your verse 3. For what the law, that was a Ezekiel law, could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Watch this. That the righteousness of the law, that's the law of the Spirit of God, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Now, when we're talking about the flesh here, we're talking about a carnal lifestyle. If we're just walking in sin and the way we always did in the world, well, that's a good evidence to you. Your life is not changed. 
So that means you don't have the Spirit because the Bible said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Thank God. Old things are passed away and all things become new. And children, I'm telling you by my own experience, when God come into my life, he changed me. I did not want that sin in nature I had. And thank God I didn't have to worry about giving up alcohol and all the cravings. He did deliver me from that. And to this day I wouldn't want it and I thank God I'm free from it because now I know what bondage it had on people. Now I may not have been as big as drunk as you call it as some people were. But I know one thing, I was addicted to these things. But thank God Jesus set you free. Now watch your next verse. Bible said, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Now see, that's walking after the flesh. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, that means you've got the mind of Christ, is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Now see your mind. That's where you do your thinking. That's where if there's any kind of lust of the flesh or any kind of pride of life or anything that's going to try to devour you, it attacks your mind. And that's why the Bible said, let the mind be in you that was in Jesus. So surely we can understand when we get all these carnal thoughts and lusts or temptations coming at you, it's up to you whether they get in your mind or not. You see, we can run that stuff off. As God is my helper, Bible said, we through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. Now, if you're not a Christian, then you're going to have the problem of getting out of this. You have to have Jesus Christ to be clean. And then he give you this Bible to follow, and he said you're clean through the Word. Thank God that I've spoken. Children, it's not hard to be a Christian. What's hard is knowing you're a sinner and trying to be a Christian. If you just simply be willing to repent, Turn away from me, sins. And children, as I've said before, I'll give you a guarantee message here that'll tell you how to get that real spirit. But you've got to give a, a real heart toward God. You see, I can't be a hypocrite. I mean, I might fool men, but I can't fool God. And that means if the Bible tells me to repent, then I'm going to have to seriously mean that and really repent, which means get a mind change that I don't want to live in sin no longer. So you can reach Christ. And the Bible tells you in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, repent and be baptized. That takes both repentance and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, children, that's a promise to you. So people that think that they can't live right need to realize you can live right. If you want to, it's up to you. I mean, we can not believe or we can just say, well, I know it says that, but we're going to have to believe, children, because salvation comes through your acceptance to Christ. Now, watch this. See, I'm on a different subject than the way I thought I was going to be on today, and I'm glad of that because when you're led by God, He gives you what He wants. So watch this. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can be. That's why Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Now children, don't get hurt at me, but study your Bible. If Jesus said, without me you can do nothing, then that means without the Holy Ghost, you are nothing to Him. As far as being a child of God. Honey, you can't be a son of God or a daughter of God. It doesn't matter what the pastor says. But you cannot be a son of God or a daughter of God until he gives you his spirit. 
And did not the Bible say that he came unto his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him. Now listen to me. If you've truly in your heart accepted Jesus Christ into your life, and that preacher tells you that you're not saved yet, you've not got the Holy Ghost yet, but you know there's a change in you. Well, let me tell you something. You don't obey that preacher because your Bible tells you plainly. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So, if you got him at all, you got the Spirit. It's that simple. But yet, people are saved, we're just saved by the Word, but not by the Holy Ghost. Honey, without either one of them, you're in trouble. It's that simple. Now, stay with me. I'm going to be showing you and reading it to you. Watch this. So, they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So you see, when you get up in the morning and you're striving to stay away from the sins and the life that you used to live and all, and you're trying to live right and you're really holding on with God, don't tell me that ain't something leading you. Honey, it is. Because if you don't have Jesus, it don't bother you to get up and do anything you want to do. You'll have friends that wants to drink and run around. You'll jump right after her with them, and it won't bother you. But if you've got Christ in you, you'll know I can't do that. And if you want to be led by him, then you're going to stay away from that kind of lifestyle. See, this is walking in the Spirit. Now watch your Bible. Bible said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because a carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can be. Children, listen to verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh, that ain't talking about in the body, but it means in a carnal mind. They that are in the flesh, come on, cannot please God. Now, what happened to them 23,000 that didn't please God? Remember, in 1 Corinthians 10, 23,000 were destroyed because of fornication. Children, pleasing God is doing your best to keep them commandments and obeying Him. And I'm talking to somebody that's given their heart to Him. Now, watch this. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Everybody go to verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the what? Spirit of God dwell in you. Paul said, now, if any man, read it with me, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see, children, it tells you plainly. There's no difference in the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ because it's all Jesus' Spirit. And your Bible said here, you're not in the flesh but in the Spirit, if so be the Spirit of God, that's the Holy Ghost, dwell in you. And he said, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, come on, he's none of his. Now children, that's where the problem is. People going around and teaching you that you get saved, but you don't get the Holy Ghost. Now, I've been called a blasphemer and trodden the blood underfoot and everything because I teach that when Jesus Christ comes into your life, you just got the Holy Ghost in you. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, number one, you're not believing Jesus is the Holy Ghost. You can't get two spirits. And Paul said, if any man... Have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Well, how can you even be saved then if you don't have the Spirit? Let me show you something. Stay with me here. Go with me. If you've got a Bible at home, mark this. The book of Titus. Watch this. Let me read you a few things here to help us out. Titus chapter 2. And you read it all, but I'm going to read you chapter 2 and chapter 3 for a moment. Go to verse about 11. The Bible said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, 
righteously and godly in this present world, looking unto that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What's this? Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from, our, from all iniquity and purify unto himself, what's this, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Now children, drop down to the next chapter because all this goes together. Start at verse 4. But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior, that's Jesus, toward man appeared. Watch this. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy. Are you ready? Listen to it. He saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration. What is that washing of regeneration? That's that fountain that you find in the book of Zechariah 13 that God said, I'll open to the house of David. You are not saved without the washing from your sins and the regeneration. Watch your next verse. Let me prove it to you. Watch this. Not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy, children, hear this. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Do you know what that means? It don't mean the Holy Ghost gets renewed, but it takes the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, to renew you, to save you, to wash you, and cleanse you. And children, He does it through His Spirit and His Word. A lot of people's teaching us we're saved, but you've got to go back later to get the Holy Ghost. Honey, you can go back and get the tongues if you want to. Or you can go back and get the prophecies if you want to. And He may give them to you when He saves you. But it don't matter whether He does or not. If you're not born to the Spirit, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. Now children, I'm not well loved, but I'm going to tell the truth. Do I teach, do I believe that you can be saved and never have spoken in tongues? The answer is yes, you can. And also I'll tell you by the Bible, if you're not saved by the Holy Ghost, then you just hang in there till you get it because you're not Christian without it. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, then the Bible says none of his. Well, how can Jesus save me? You say, by word only? I'm afraid not. Because it takes the Spirit and the Word. And if Peter gave you his Word that Jesus gave him in Acts 2.38, here's the Word, repent. That's a word talking. Be baptized. That's a word talking. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And what did that next part say? Acts 2.38. And you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Does it say that? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, did you ever read? Drop them down there. Acts 2 and about verse 40 on. They that gladly received Peter's word were baptized and thanked God. The same day, it didn't take God long, the Lord added unto them about 3,000 souls. How did God save us? Read it again. Not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration. The regeneration is the Holy Ghost. That new birth that makes you a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a royal generation. Regenerate means to make it new. And that's where the Holy Ghost comes in. Honey, I lift my hand to God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And the first thing God does, now I'm not doubting some people receive the tongues right quickly. That's good. But there are people running around here with tongues that their life is terribly sinful. 
because they're going by what preacher said. And the preacher will tell you something and the devil makes sure you get it. Speaking in tongues is right. But there was a question in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Do all speak with tongues? Do all prophesy? Do all have the same gifts? Your Bible said covet earnestly the best gifts. Children, speaking with other tongues is a sign or it's a gift. But the Holy Ghost is the operator. You have to have the Holy Ghost or you're nothing to the Lord. Now I'm just being plain because there's too many people suffering because some preacher is running them off or telling them they don't have nothing because they don't do what the preacher does. Honey, I don't want to be in their socks in the day of judgment because the Word's going to judge us. And the Bible has said He saved us with washing and regenerating and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Here it is. Which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord. When He saved you, He washed you, cleansed you. See? Regenerated, renewed you by the Holy Ghost. Now, children, take it or leave it, it's God's way. And He shed it on us, poured it down abundantly. I'm come, you could have life, Jesus said, more abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, watch this. That being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's a power. Now read all of that when you get time, but this agrees perfectly with Romans 8 and verse 9. Read it again. Romans chapter 8 and verse 9. Watch this. But you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell, dwell means live, in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Is the Spirit of Christ the Holy Ghost? Did Jesus say it's expedient for you that I go away? For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now children, if the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, if that's not the Spirit of Christ, then I'll go with the rest of the world. They have to be at least two spirits. And you know better than that. Your Bible said by one spirit are we all baptized, which means immersed or put into the body by the spirit. Now, we know that on the day of Pentecost, some things happened. First of all, and you don't see a whole lot of it today, suddenly, thank God, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all that house where they were assembled, about 120, including the apostles. And the Bible said they, A-double-L, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, gave them utterance. Now, there's no doubt every one of them spoke in tongues that day. But why did God choose that tongues on that day? Because God had already prophesied in Isaiah, I believe, chapter 28 concerning the Jews of being gathered at Jerusalem. And He said, With stammering lips, and another tongue will I speak unto this people. God did that miracle, speaking in other tongues. Why? Because he had about 17 different nations of the Jews that had been in every nation just about, from Parthians, Mede, Lamites, dwellers at Mesopotamia, different areas, Cappadocia, come out of every part and gathered at Jerusalem. And when they saw these good people full of the Holy Ghost, they wasn't only speaking in tongues, but they were staggering. They were actually drunk on that new wine. And that's what I'm saying. They was more than just speaking in tongues on that day. But God chose that power of speaking in tongues for a purpose. It's a sign to them that don't believe. 
Well, there were devout Jews. Now you read your Bible. Out of every nation under heaven gathered there. And when they heard them speaking in their own languages, they were confounded. And some were said, these are drunken. But Peter told them, they're not drunk as you think. But this is that, thank God, which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. That in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit. Now listen to it on all flesh. He didn't only say tongues would come along. But he said, and your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. I'm going to show wonders in heaven above, signs in earth beneath. And he said also, old men, I believe it was dream dreams and young men and so forth see visions. A lot of things happened that day. But when you get time, read 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We may get into that a little later. Because... The manifestation, which is the evidence of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. Now children, I know a lot of our leaders don't like it, but I have to tell you the truth because I don't believe we've got much time to redeem where we failed God. Now, for me to tell some child that they've not got the Holy Ghost because they haven't spoken tongues, that is a wrong thing teacher. That's not Bible. But now if you want to speak in tongues that's fine. Don't give it up till you do. But you can't judge everybody else if you got it and they don't. Because there was five signs and one of them was speaking with new tongues the other one was casting out devils the other one was taking up serpents and the other one was if they drink any deadly thing and not hurt them and the other was they shall lay hands on the sick was there five signs of following the believers? See, I'm not going to leave two of them out. I'm not going to leave none of them out. Because these apostles went forth and preached everywhere, and the Lord was a working with them, confirming the word with signs following. And then we find out in the book of Acts how God began to give them gifts and power. Well, Paul even possessed a power of God that aprons and handkerchiefs could go out from his body and people were healed and unclean spirits coming out of people see everybody don't do the same but yet it's in there for us if we can believe it so children I can't put one gift above another but now if you want tongues that's fine get it if you seek him enough he'll give it to you or maybe he'll give it to you when you did get saved it's up to the Lord but there's too many people hurt because they don't know if they're saved or not because of some preacher. Now I'm telling this, it's the preacher doing this. We need to realize if you really know in yourself that Jesus came into you and changed you and that you're a new creation and you've fallen in love with him, why well, wouldn't let the devil tell me I didn't have the Lord? Honey, I'm going to tell you something. Every gift is right. Every sign is right in that Bible. But it ain't everything claiming them that is right. I felt that out. But I do know, children, without a doubt, that if any man, woman, or whoever has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So you need to know these things. So I see my time's about up. Stay with me. I'm going to continue in this. And we're going to look into some of these gifts and so forth because we're in a very hour that we need to know the truth. So stay with me. Write us in any prayer requests. If you can help us on the programs, we appreciate it and need it. So till our next time we see in Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to The Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. And may God bless you.